and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our show, The East Meets the West. Manatwe, Nawa. Hinchje, Stongo. Hello. Hi, my name is Martin, known as Barbo here in the village. Hello, I'm Jim Sawgrass. I'm going to be representing the tribes of the Eastern United States today. Pottery. Some of the oldest clay pots of the United States are found here in the Eastern United States. Florida and Georgia pottery, known as the orange style pottery, dates back thousands of years ago. Introduced to the area, maybe by other tribes, no one knows for sure, but that way it became a way of cooking using clay, the earth. We shaped it, we made our bowls, we dried it, we baked it in the fires, and we made it so it was hard. Sometimes people learn to mark the sides of the clay with uh, sometimes using wooden paddles with markings on them. Sometimes they would use their fingernails or sticks and they would draw little designs or whatnot. This a lot of times identifies the potter or the family that might have owned it. Some of them had very intricate designs. And of course, um, even things like corn cobs or corn would be rolled around the wet clay to leave an impression behind. But pottery was a good way of cooking with, with, before this, they took stones, uh, in the east it was called soapstone, a very soft stone that you can carve, and they carved out big stone bowls. It was very heavy, very uh, hard to move around. Clay pots were light, but the problem with clay was it breaks so easy. When Europeans brought the metal cooking pots, just like everything, it replaced the old way. Look at the way I'm dressed in the trade era. Much nicer than the way he's dressed. What? No, I'm like, I'm, I'm real... I'm really cool. That's yeah. the way I'm dressed, I'm really cool. Clay pots, huh? Yeah, pottery. Yeah, what do you guys got? Uh, well, before the iron pots, you know, we what we did, we, we, we also uh, we stuffed our, our stomachs, you know, the buffalo stomachs with meat. Oh, man. What we, we would do is, uh, you know, you could roast it over fire. You could uh, roll it on the uh, the ashes of the fire and cook that. And, uh, oh, man, that was really good. That was better than a clay pot. It didn't break. Cooked it, out of a buffalo stomach, Yeah, huh? yeah. Mm. You could eat it, too. Sounds like a hot pocket. Hot pocket. Yeah. Hot pocket. Yeah. Native people in the eastern United States lived by waters a lot. Waters were the way of traveling. The rivers were the highways. Canoes and boats made it able to travel. This is a dugout canoe. By burning out a log and digging out the log, that's how it gets its name, dugout. This was the type of canoes made by tribes here in the southern United States. Up north they used a birch bark and other types of bark to make uh, different canoes. But this is a small version. This is actually for a kid, not for a person my size. But some of the canoes were 30 feet long. There is evidence to suggest canoes were tied side by side, built into rafts with sails made of woven mats so they could travel. And travel is what they did. Going to islands, off the coast of Florida was no uncommon thing. They knew about each other. They went to the islands long before Columbus ever landed. Tribes of the Tainos lived in what today is Puerto Rico, and they got there by giant canoes. And so living by the water, living along the rivers, let's talk about some of the ways to catch a fish. First is traps. Check out this fish trap. It's made out of grapevines. Harvesting the grapevines and forming them into a funnel. You'll notice inside there's another set of sticks. This is an inner basket that's set. So this would be put in a, a river, and then they would place a rock on the back here so it won't float nowheres. And as the fish are swimming in the river, um, a lot of times they would build walls with rocks, laying rocks in a pile in a row, making a wall that guided the fish right into the basket. When they go in there, they go into this open hole, now they get in the side, there's no escape out the back, and so they got to turn around to come back out the way they went in. And so if you'll notice right here, there are sharp spikes. And so those spikes, if you were coming out that hole, imagine those spikes looking right at your eyeballs. That's what that would look like. And so it keeps the fish in. And when it's full of fish, you pick it up, carry it out of the river, Untie the inside basket, which comes right out by untying it, and then you can dump out your fish. 
Another way to catch a fish is a spear. The spear I'm about to show you is called a gig. The head of it there is carved out of bone. And I've used some tree sap glue to glue it in there. That's a piece of alligator bone right there. And um, basically this is made so when I spear the fish, it sticks into the fish and comes off. See how it comes off there? This sticks into that fish and those barbs keep it from coming back out. The fish takes off swimming. He's fighting hard, trying to get away. And wherever that fish goes, this string at the other end has something floating in the water, a gourd. It's got air in it and it floats. And wherever the fish goes, this follows. And when the fish is all worn out and too tired to fight anymore, well, then the fisherman would watch his gourd and see it not moving and pull, pull in his fish. So that gig right there. How about a hook? A hook to catch a fish. These are different examples of some of the hooks that you would have found being used by native people. Hooks. They carved them out of bones of animals. They carved them out of wood. They made them out of shell. They glued them together. They made strings using yucca. One of the oldest styles of fishing hooks known to man is the gore hook. This would be baited, bait on there, and then when the fish bites into it, this would open up and lodge in the, the ladder of the fish, and he would be stuck there. This right here is uh, the J hook. This one's made out of a deer's toe bone. It's been splintered in half and carved into a hook. I've got a shell that acts as a sinker, a corn cob that acts as a float, the string is made of yucca, and there is no fishing pole. This would be tied to a branch of a tree and left there with bait on it. The fisherman would check on it periodically and see if he's got a hook or see if he's got a fish. Maybe he's just got an empty hook like these. That one's carved out of alligator bone. How about that? This one here, he's 13 foot, 4 inches long. He came from Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, he's real. Look at these teeth I'm wearing around my neck. Some of them came out of him. That bone right there is carved into a fish hook, and it's made out of alligator bone. Alligator bone is one of the toughest bones there is because the density in that it makes it a good fish hook. Imagine catching him on a hook. Wow. The belly of the alligator is very valuable. The natives used many things uh, with it. Pliable, soft leather. The back of the alligator has bones underneath it known as scoots. They protect him on his back, just like armor. So if you try to stab him in the back or tomahawk him with a, an ax, it wouldn't do nothing. It would bounce right off. These armor on his back from his tail all the way to his head, it protects him. And so he was hard to get long ago. This was a big hunt back then, a big gator. Weaving, it's one of the oldest arts of man. It goes back to breaking rocks and making arrowheads. People wove things. The fibers and grasses that nature gives us was used for thousands of years to make baskets, mats, and many other items. That's right. Even like the yucca plant here, you, know, you take the leaves, uh, break them down to smaller strands. You can make uh, rope-like twine here or bigger thick rope. You can also weave, uh, weave the plant into uh, sandals or even mats uh, for your for to, to, to lay on. Uh, so that's, that's a part of the plants that you use. Uh, a lot of desert desert tribes would uh, use this, you know, and, and like I said, would make their make their sandals. So you know, you want to burn your feet. Yeah. We also used yucca here in the east. Yucca is what I used to make the fire with today. But we, um, we used uh, many other plants too, like this is made out of two palm leaves woven together to form a basket shaped like a heart. This is made out of uh, split river cane, river cane which was used to make the blowgun uh, that I demonstrated. Um, they wove not only uh, bar uh, pine needles and barks, they made their baskets by coiling which is what this is, a coiled basket. And they also made them by weaving. 
which is what that is, woven. And so big difference there in types of weave uh, baskets. Moss, Spanish moss, twisted, made into rope. This one's made out of the bark of a cypress tree. And of course, uh, many grasses and inner barks of trees. This one is the poplar tree bark, which grows in the mountains of uh, North Georgia, the Carolinas. This is a bark bucket or bark basket made out of poplar bark. And earlier I showed that bark. This is what the inside bark looks like. And the outer bark can be folded up. And they actually sealed with tree sap glue and made it waterproof a lot of times to carry water with. And they also carried many supplies with these as well. This is a woven pack, black, uh, pack basket. Um, uh, a lot of times you could uh, have two of these uh, tied with a leather strap and you could put it on, on, on your horse so you could have you know, a couple baskets full of stuff while uh, the horse does all your work and have to carry it. Some yucca. It's been shredded down into just strings just by twisting it. You can see make a rope with it. It's very strong. The tighter you twist it, the stronger it gets. Now if you've got another person that can hold it, here, hold it for me. Thank you. Makes it a little easier. Now what I'm going to do is start going faster here. And let's get a little sideways so everybody can see. There we go. And if you'll notice my fingers are twisting right there twisting right there, see? And then I'm switching every time, see? And so when we're done, we're gonna have a piece of rope. And if I wanna make it longer, then I'm gonna have to splice. I'm gonna have to add, which means you gotta have some ready to go. Look how long our rope's getting here. Twisting, yeah. Have some more here. You wanna add a piece in there? We'll take a little piece out. Watch how I splice. We want to take the end. We want to set it in there just like that. Put it on one side, twist it in there, and then lock it in place. There you go. It's on that side. There it is. And then we have to do the same thing on the other side. So you put it in there, twist it, and lock it in. And you can make it that rope as long as you want. You can even make baskets into things. These are made into little animals, you know, so they, they made them uh, real entertaining. So you could pop that open, use it to store things, and it's little, it's like a little chicken or something, and a turtle. How about a basket within a basket? This one's made out of river cane, and another one made out of river cane, and this one's made out of river cane and pine needles together, and this one's got color on it just like the paint I'm wearing. We also used paint for dyes, but weaving baskets with color made them look prettier. Look at that one, pine needles. And yeah, of course there's another basket in there. Let's get it out. Running out of fingers. There we go. How about that one? Or maybe you'll like this one. See there? Made out of pine needles. Or maybe you'll like these little guys. Look at those little baskets. What are you holding those? Um, that's for, uh, if you're on a diet, these are your picnic baskets. Here you go, brother. You get one corn oil corn, one bean, and then this little one, that's for your uh, beef jerky. Mm. little crumb. What are you trying to say? Oh, nothing. Actually, those are girls' earrings. 